Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's a time of day for Virgin Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends, connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea, there's so much to do. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. La la, small fry. Learn and have fun, cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hi friends, welcome back to virtual small fry school here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca and I'm so excited that you're here with us today. We will be hosting these live at 11 a.m. Alaska time right here on YouTube. And if you have any questions, feel free to text the number in the description below. And I do have some friends with me today, but don't worry. We are all keeping a safe distance. They're wearing masks, and so we're all being safe. And I want to acknowledge that I live and work on the traditional homeland of the Alutic Suksiak people, whose heritage and culture continue to enrich our communities today. Now, last week, we learned about ROVs with Shauna. We learned that these ROVs help us explore the deep sea, and they have body parts too. They have arms to collect species or animals down there. We learned about the ocean layers and got some really cool pictures from friends. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, this week, we are learning about one of my favorite habitats, and that's the rocky shore. Let's take a look. So, what do you see? What do you notice? Can you share with someone around you? I see the ocean. I see these big rocks and big waves that are crashing on those rocks. I also see the sun. It's daylight. The sun is, makes me nice and warm. So that tells me that it's also maybe a warm day. So calming and beautiful and relaxing. I do love this habitat, friends. And um, so I'm from California, and I love it. I love the waves. Now, talking about waves, I want us to do waves. Are you ready? You take your arms out, maybe bend them a little, and then slowly do small waves. We'll start off small. Small waves, just like this. Ready for a little bigger waves, little bigger. Then big waves, big waves, just like that. And we're gonna crash, ready? Crash, oh my gosh, good. Now, this rocky coast is home to some ocean animals um, that we can see here behind me. What do you have in your home that helps you survive? Well, our home provides protection. We also find food in our home to keep us healthy and help us grow. We have water so that we can drink and stay hydrated. And resting areas, maybe a couch, a chair, your bed. The rocky coast is the same for these animals. The rocks provide protection, that's their home, and they also provide a place to rest. There's so much food there. These rocks help uh, form pools. The water, the ocean rises and falls throughout the day, and that's called the tide. When the ocean rises, all these pools are filled with seawater. And when it falls, then these pools are left to, uh, for, uh, are left to be um, uncovered and for the animals to continue exploring. Now, we did learn that 
there's so many waves and so many rocks crashing, uh, so, so many waves crashing onto these rocks. And um, if we, I want to show you this really cool video. So here we can see so many tide pools, all these rocks, all that water, those are all little pools for the animals to live in. What do you see here? I saw a little fish swimming. And I see an anemone. So when the tide goes out and these pools are left, the animals risk drying out. But we also have the opportunity to go and enjoy the tide pools and see some of these animals like the sea stars, that hermit crab that we just saw. But we have to be very gentle and very careful when we go and explore these tide pools. Do you know what this animal is? It's a snail. What about this one? It's a crab, yeah, and a snail friend. And this is a nudibranch. We learned that this, this is Shauna's favorite animal, and so I added this for her. And sometimes, sometimes you can see nudibranchs in, in the tide pools um, hidden amongst the seaweeds, and it's really cool when you see them. Now, when you do go out there, please touch gently when you see these animals. And if you do your two fingers with one hand, you can take your other hand and then gently touch your hand, just like that. Yeah, so practice touching your hand gently so that when you go out to the tide pools, you can practice, you can touch the animals gently too. And um, we're now going to move, in, move into our activity today and we're gonna be counting fish. You need this printout, I'll get it for you. This printout, which you can find on our website or on the description below. And you also need your favorite snack. I have goldfish with me today, um, but you can do anything, you can use anything. Ready? Okay, friends, so again, again, once a, a reminder that if you have any questions, please text them into the number in the description below. So we saw that little fish in that tide pool swimming. Do you remember what body parts it uses to swim? It's fins, yeah. So what number is this, do you know? That's the number one. How many fish are we going to put in here? One, yeah, so I'll take my goldfish. You can take what, whatever snack you have. I'll put them off to the side. I like the colorful goldfish because I like a lot of colors. But my favorite is like a turquoise blue or like an ocean color. One. Rebecca, you have time for a question? Yes, of course. All right, we've got a couple here. So what kind of animals live in the Rocky Coast? Oh yeah. What kind of animals live there? So we saw a few of them in the videos that I showed you. Um, we, <clears throat> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, friends. We have snails and we, there, you can find sea stars, lots of different sea stars there. You can find fish, different fish, those nudibranchs. You can find crabs, sometimes an octopus. I have seen it. You can find an octopus in there too. And then other really cool animals that when the tide goes out, uh, sometimes get stuck in those little pools and wait for the water to come back um, and rise and then they go back into the ocean. Yeah. What number is this here? Two. So let's put two fish there. I'm putting a red and a green. Hey, Rebecca, we have another question for you. Yeah. Do we have tide pools here in Alaska? Oh, great question. We do have tide pools here. Here in Seward, um, you can find them on the other side of the bay, um, but you can also go to the other side uh, where like Homer is, the area. Maybe you can ask your parents where that is. But basically, the animals that call the Rocky Shore home, they live where the rocks are. So if you go to like the beach and there's a lot of rocks and the tide is out or low, you can go and explore those rocks and see if you find any animals stuck on those rocks or you know, hiding or protecting themselves. So you can definitely go and explore. What number is this here, friends? 
three. Yeah, let's count together. One, two, three. Yay. All right, Rebecca, we have another question. Yeah. So why are some waves big and other waves small? Oh, great question. Why are some waves? Well, friends, it really depends on the wind. Um, the wind really drives the waves. And so some, sometimes it's a really windy day and you find bigger waves. Sometimes it's not. And the waves are um, normal, regular waves that are still driven by the wind. So there's always wind around us. Mm -hmm. OK, number is this, four. Ready, one, two, three, four. What comes after four? Five. One, oh, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and the last one. What comes after five? Six. Hey, Rebecca, we mm -hmm. have another question. Yeah. What kind of things do the animals in the tide pool eat? Can they eat when they're in the, the pools? Yeah, definitely. So um, they tend to uh, protect themselves when there's waves there. So when the tide is low, there's not that many waves. And so they can go out and explore and find food to eat. It really depends on the animal, Shauna, um, because snails, for example, like to eat lots of algae or seaweeds. Um, other animals can eat other fish or whatever happens to land in their area, um, like anemones. They eat fish or really whatever they can get a hold of. So Rebecca, Elijah has a question for you. He would like to know, what is the rarest creature you can find in a tide pool? The rarest creature. Holy cow, Elijah, that is a good question. What is the rarest creature? Well, Shauna, this is a good question because I can tell you, Elijah, the rarest creature that I've seen. Um, I have seen a little shark in one of the tide pools. And so like I was saying earlier, um, that's not their habitat. But when the water is, when the tide is high, they can go um, that far up and then get stuck in those tide pools and wait for the water um, to come back and then go back out into the open ocean where they live. But um, you can really find anything. The tide pool is such a really cool place to explore. What about you, Shauna? I've seen a, a lot of jellyfish. Those yes. are like pretty rare yeah. to see as well because they don't like to be mm -hmm. stuck. They like deeper water, but they're pretty, pretty fun to see. They're pretty. They're very pretty when you see them. Definitely. So many opportunities for um, discovery, Elijah. Highly recommend that you um, go explore this summer. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five. All right, we've got another question for you, Rebecca. Yeah. So, how deep are the tide pools? Another great question. It really depends on the pool and the sand that is underneath them. Some rock, bigger rocks can form bigger pools. Smaller rocks form smaller pools. Um, I don't know if you can see here behind me, um, but yeah, it really depends on the pool. Yeah, any more questions? Nope? Okay, friends. Um, so yeah, you can see some rocks here behind me. Um, these are our rocky coast uh, tide pools or discovery pools, if you will, and so um, these rocks are small, but in, in the wild, out in the ocean, out on the beach, you can find way bigger rocks that form bigger tide pools. I've seen some so big, as big as like a swimming pool. They can get really big, and then there's so much to discover. Um, so friends, I, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about sea snails. And I do want to thank you for being here with us today. And I also want to thank Alaska 529 for sponsoring this episode. And um, I'm going to leave you with story time. Today, we have a really fun one. We have Secrets of the Seashore. So
So you can see uh, what else you can find here in the tide pools, because it's not just the animals that live in the water. Some seabirds also depend on the, si on the tide pools for food. So find out. Secrets of the Seashore, a Shine a Light book by Karen Brown, illustrated by Alyssa Nasner. A tide pool is a hollow on the seashore. Can you see what happens when the tide comes in? Whoosh! The seawater flows in with the tide and fills the tide pool. Creatures that live in seawater have waited for the tide pool to fill. What's hiding in the shells? Bubble bubble. Mussels keep their blue shells tightly shut while the tide is out. Now they open their shells and begin to feed. Creatures cling to the rocks around the pool. Who could live in shells like these? Barnacles come to life in the water. They reach out their feathery legs to wave tiny pieces of food into their mouth. Flutter, flutter. Other creatures are waking up too. What are these jewel-like animals? Stretch. Two sea anemones are searching for food with their long, wriggly tentacles. They eat small fish and shrimp. Dark nooks under rocks make perfect hiding places. Can you see who is resting here? Click, click. A crab holds its pincers up, ready to grab a tidbit to eat. The crab is on the move but there's another hunter nearby. <gasps> Hold tight. A starfish uses tube-like suckers on its underside to hold onto the rock. Another animal with suckers is resting in the tide pool. Can you count its eight arms? An octopus has eight long arms with suckers on the underside. It crawls slowly over the rocks. There is an animal hiding in the sand. Only its eyes can be seen. What do you think it is? Splish, splash. A small fish lives in the tide pool. It hides under rocks, in seaweed, and in the sand. Another tide pool creature lives in this large shell. What do you think it could be? Surprise! A hermit crab has made his home in the empty shell. This whelk is sharing its part of the tide pool with small swimming creatures. Can you see them? S 
swish. Shrimp move backward by quickly flicking their tails. Their see-through bodies are much easier to find when they move. Something is waving in the water. Which plants live in the sea? Slick and slimy seaweed anchors itself to rocks and grows in the sun. What is slithering along in the seaweed? A whelk is looking for other shellfish. It can drill a hole through a shell to eat the creature inside. A sleek sea otter has spotted something. Can you see what she wants for dinner? Ouch! Most animals stay away from those nasty spikes, but a sea urchin is a tasty meal for the sea otter. Which orange-beaked bird lives on the seashore? An oyster catcher is calling out to other birds. Squack! Can you see what the oyster catcher has found in the sand? It's a clam! The oyster catcher's long beak is perfect for finding buried food. Slowly, the tide retreats, and with it, much of the water in the tide pool. Its animals and plants are resting again, waiting for the next tide to come in. The end.